Hi there, welcome to Vancouver Bass Players. My name is Lawrence Mollerup, and today I'm going to be interviewing Kirby Barber. Kirby is a bass player originally from Salmon Arm, who uh, studied in Edmonton, much like I did. And uh, she's also lived in Vancouver, and she's currently in Nashville. Uh, Kirby has uh, a lot of accolades as a bass player, including the uh, BC Country Music Association Bass Player of the Year, also for the uh, the CCC, CCMA. Uh, she's been nominated as Bass Player of the Year. And some of the artists she works with are Trick Pony, Aaron Pritchett, Presley and Taylor, Raquel Cole, uh, our own Sherry Ulrich, and her band uh, GB Roots. And Kirby does sessions and uh, works down in Nashville. So hi, Kirby. How are you today? Hey, Lawrence. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I think I'm on my third coffee. How about you? Uh, yeah, four or five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, you got me beat there. Yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful day up here in Vancouver um, and uh, out enjoying the weather a little bit this morning, getting out for a walk. And it's really... Uh, it's so nice to uh, to get out there on the sunny days when you get the chance and sort of, uh, yeah, just take it all in, right? So I was down by English Bay this morning for a while. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. So uh, we were talking before just a little bit, and, and um, I was thinking maybe we could lead off with a lesson, a bass lesson, if you've got uh, something there. I know I've got a, a chart to look at here. That Should I put that up on the screen? Let's do it. Yeah. Okay, uh, this is, I think his name is Jamie Lee Thurston. Um, and I've, I've only actually played this tune once. I just found this chart in my pile and I was thinking it'd be just a nice, easy one to uh, have a look at and just kind of, there we go. There it is. Um, I was thinking we could talk about the Nashville number system. Uh, Cause I Fantastic. feel like something that's very, been very useful for me. And um it's just an efficient way to chart a bunch of songs, you know? So um, this tune, if we look at the chart here, okay, so, oh, and it's a little messy, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's pretty clear okay. to me. So we got the key over on the left-hand side there, we're in the key of E, and uh, the numbers that you see obviously are in relation to the, the major scale. So if we're in the key of E, the one is the E chord. So what would be the four chord? Yeah, A. awesome. Yeah. And what would be the six minor chord? Awesome. So C sharp, yeah. Yeah, and the five chord? So B. Yeah. And so, so the, little, the Go ahead. little dash for the six is indicating that it's a minor. Yeah, so C sharp yeah. minor sound there. So instead of an M, uh, it's, a, it's a, a dash for minor. Yeah, some guys still write a little M, but it seems that they're kind of going more towards putting a dash. So I'm trying to do that. Um, and then, okay, so right off the top there, I use, you can see that it says in, so I know that the I'm in right off the top. Uh, no P dash, or sorry, slash U means no pickup. So I know there's no pickup into the tune. I like to write if there's like a fiddle pickup or a guitar pickup, just so I know like where to look if it's like, Say I don't know the song very well and I just charted it one time and you know, so I know there's no pickup so I'm straight in and I'm in the key of E. Um, I wrote that we have an eighth note feel off the top. So, right, so I'd be doing this. Gorgeous. Something like that. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, and then I get to verse one, I've indicated a, just a slightly different feel there. So yeah, so the notation there. Um, so I noticed that when I listened to uh, the track uh, on Jamie Lee's recording, the kick drums going. So you know that that change. Yeah. And it's just nice to know, like, if, and you can write it really quickly under there, right? So that you're reading it and like, you get to that point, you're like, okay, I just know I'm hitting on one and the end of two. So that's yeah. my change of the verse. Then I'm into the pre-chorus. I go back to the eighth note feel. Um, and then under the chorus, I wrote similar. So meaning we stay with the eighth note feel. Um, a diamond at the end of the chorus. But it's just such a nice way to read through a chart, right? It's just so simple. Yeah, it's really user friendly. And so the diamond would be a hole just on the five for the for a full bar. Yeah. So yeah. every number means a means a full bar. How do you uh, what if you have two chords in a bar? Do you put a, a notation of some sort? 
Yeah, so there's a couple way that guys do that. Um, often they'll put just a line underneath the two um, chords. So for example, let's see if I can show you on a chart I have here. So like, here's a, I don't know how we, <laughs> good we can see this. Um, so you can see how there's a line under the two chords there. Yeah, yeah, so that would be real like, close, yeah. So that'd be a split bar or shared bar. So um, they'll put a line underneath. Sometimes you'll see this, which is not as common I find, but they'll put it in brackets together uh, like that. Right. So you'll see that too, but again, it's just such an easy way to read through it, right? Yeah, for sure. And I think uh, like we were saying before, the first version of this song that I actually heard on the web uh, Jamie Lee was playing in a guitar tuned E flat, but it was no problem. I just thought of, you know, just, just change and use the number system in E flat, right? Yeah. It's just such a good system for that. And I mean, more often than not, the key will change, you know, it might, you might find out before you might find out three seconds before the song starts, but with the natural number system, it's like, eh, it doesn't matter if it's an E or C or C sharp, you know? Yeah, it's very uh, user friendly and, and quick for sure. It reminds me of Chinese notation, actually. They use a similar thing, solfege based, and, and at least the, the versions I've seen of that where they, they write numbers and they, they put a, a longer line for a quarter note and then a shorter line for a eighth note and 16th even shorter. So they have like a separate system and then they, the line is below for the low octave and above for the higher octave so if you're oh, cool. yeah so it's kind of it's kind of similar in a way oh sorry for that beep there that was an email coming in sorry, uh, that was me. oh is that your end okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what i was thinking i would do uh for our our bass listeners today is uh i've got the track here it's called given up breathing by jamie lee thurston and, and i'll put a little i right up here on youtube uh where people can hear that i'm not going to share uh, the song, because there's a copyright, I, I want to honor the copyright, uh, but people can listen to that link after, and maybe I'll play along with it, and all they'll hear is the bass, but maybe that would give them a demo of, of reading your chart. Is that cool with you? That's awesome, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to be rocking along. He's playing already, so nobody else can hear it be, but me, and I'll start on the four chord. Here's the six, five. Nice voice. And here's the verse one. Here's the pre chorus. crescendo and here's the chorus oh I got to stop it right there he, he just said uh, swear off caffeine and you you know that's a lie <laughs> that's terrible I'll never play for him again <laughs> that's right <laughs> so do you want to uh, should I keep the chart up on screen there for a second maybe I'll put it back sure. yeah so um, what I noticed listening to the track yesterday was the bass is actually fairly soft. There's not a lot of attack. It's not like one of these kind of sounds where you're like, you know, like with a lot of attack. It's it's really warm in the mix underneath. It's not one of those drawing attention to yourself kind of bass parts. Yeah, for sure. But I feel like you nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, maybe I'll sub for you once everything comes back. <laughs> hey, the gig is yours. <laughs> We got to work on our visa applications and that kind of stuff. So right. <laughs> hang on a minute. Yeah. So that's really an, an awesome lesson for, uh, for all of our bass players. I think um, lots of players use this system, not just in Nashville, you know, for quick charts, people that are playing sessions and, and on pop tunes and stuff. Yeah. So that's yeah, great. It, honestly, it saved my life because it was, I was actually, when I was in school learning to chart, I was using staff paper and like I'm charting, 
country songs on staff paper and my songs end up being like six pages long or whatever to play Sweet Home Alabama, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, okay, things have got to change here. And then, you know, someone, when I was maybe like 18 or something, kind of be a national number chart and I was like, okay, this makes so much sense. You know, I can put so much info on one page and I can, essentially, if I need to, I can chart the song one listen through. And if I have enough details on there, I don't have to listen to the song again. Not um advising that but if you're in a pinch you know it's kind of nice it's like okay you have the feel there you've got the chords you know when you're in when you're out you know it's pretty pretty straightforward yeah and i think it would look terrible on stage if if you're the person with an eight page chart and, and everybody else is actually doing a show and looking at each other and looking at the audience and you're just lost in the chart as if you're in a pit somewhere uh yeah. doing a reading gig so that makes a lot of sense and visually too it's going to be a better show yeah. And nowadays, like in Nashville, everyone's on an iPad, right? Right. And most people are on iPads. I am not there yet because, you know, I just learned to use Zoom. <laughs> yeah, you were saying this is your second time on Zoom. I, I wish I could say that. I've done way too much of Zoom lately, but uh, no, you're doing great with it. It's uh, it's a nice technology, right? It makes this kind of thing almost like hanging out with somebody. Yeah, it is cool. Thanks for your tips, by the way. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, we were talking about how to share a screen and stuff. And um, I should do like a bass player Zoom uh, video sometime, you know, give those ideas out. So one of the questions I love to ask everybody is like, do you have a favorite musical memory? Is there, a, you know, an experience you went through at a gig or something that sort of changed your life? I was talking um, about uh, Spider Sin Eve the other day and what a big influence on me he was in the, the band Streetheart way back in the 70s. Uh, and, you know, I always figured that's one of the people that made me a bass player. And, and then shortly after that, I was introduced to Gary Carr on the double bass and, and his sound was really important. So, uh, you know, I wonder if there's sort of an influence or, or a story you'd like to share. Hmm. I have a lot of favorite memories. I, it's funny because like, as far as like, uh, favorite gigs, some of the, some of my favorite gigs are actually the smallest gigs I've ever played. Right. You know, like some, it, for me, it's always who the players are, what the music is. And um, as far as like memorable gigs though, like, or memorable musical moments, I guess. Um, one of my favorites was I got to go, do you know where Alert None of It is? Yeah. Yeah. So it's right on like the most Northern tip of Canada. Right. And I got to go up there and do a uh, a military show for our army base up there. And like all around, I would say that was probably one of my most memorable musical moments just because it was like, the, it was a, a bunch of different artists and they were all fabulous artists. And then um, I was part of the house band and we flew up there. We stopped over in Greenland for the night and um, went up there for, I think it was about a week and played for the troops up there. And just the whole experience, like, I had, well, first of all, I had no idea that we actually had a military base up there. Um, and then to experience, you know, their life up there. And it was, I think it was 24 hours of darkness when I went up there. So it was December and it was like minus 60 was the high. <laughs> That's like a lot of people born in, in the northern parts of Canada. I have a real love of winter and I, I don't hate it. I love getting out in it and, and the deep cold and the quiet uh, so I've been up to Whitehorse and, and Yellowknife, but always in the summer when it's 24 hours of light. But oh, I'd actually love to do that other end of the year like you did. That sounds just magical to me. Cool. Yeah, I love winter too. I mean, I have to. I'm Canadian. <laughs> there you go. It's a patriotic duty. <laughs> <laughs> it's written somewhere. <laughs> um, but yeah, that gig, the whole experience was just super cool. I feel, I feel like... Uh, not only like the musical experience, but just getting to be with those people who, you know, they hadn't seen anybody else for so long. And it was, they were just so appreciative that we came all that way. And the whole trek was so wild, like flying up in the Hercules and um, they let me fly the plane. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. But the whole thing was just, I think just as far as memorable gigs, that will always be one of those, you know. Which, uh, which artist were you playing with? I don't know if you said at the beginning. Uh, so there was uh, Patricia Conroy, Michelle Wright, um, and Sean Vro. All right. And then yeah. there was a couple of us in the band backing them up. So, and you know uh, Patricia Conroy, she's so awesome. She was she's done she had done it before a few times, and uh, she was like, 
you know, when we're flying up there, I was a little nervous because they strapped you into the side of the plane, like not like a normal <laughs> WestJet flight. And uh, you're wearing your headphones because it's so loud and you're wearing your full snowsuit because it's freezing on the plane. And I remember her just being like, you know, it's going to be fine. And I'm like, yeah, totally. We got this. <laughs> Wow, that's that's an amazing uh, experience to have had. Um, I was also going to ask you, uh, because we're in this weird time, and that's why these interviews are happening, instead of you and me drinking coffee together, um, it, you know, and we're doing it all through the Internet, I wonder if there's any tips you have uh, for getting through this time. Uh, before we were talking, I, I know one, maybe I'll lead off with that one. Apple pie, are you baking? <laughs> I, I'm attempting. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So you're wondering how to make the apples, was it softer or harder? Was, which way were you trying oh, to go? Please. Softer. Okay. So here's the thing I learned. Apple pie number two was successful. The first one was a little dodgy. Um, I used, so it's all about the varieties. And I found, th this is for bass players, this is really important. <laughs> I found uh, a recipe and it said like, bring in the variety so uh if you have i use mostly ambrosia apples and they're a little harder um and then you put in a granny smith which is like mush so it's that's part of the deal is is the mix of the flavors and the textures gives you a better pie you're kidding no so yeah so wait, six different apples so ambrosia yeah mostly and those and then uh throw in a, well, like only one granny smith and then like one golden delicious and you'll get you'll get a way better pie. So there you go. When you're playing bass, you want to think about pie. <laughs> Man, that's such a good tip. Yeah, for sure. I feel like I've nailed the um, well, not nailed, but I've gotten better at the crust, you know. But then my apples are still crispy, and I'm like, gosh, you know, I gotta get this right. There you go. Yeah, it's variety. Variety is the spice of life. Exactly. Thank you so much. <laughs> So yeah, apart from that, are, you know, uh, any any other tips maybe for uh, for managing yourself? You know, people are uh, in different head spaces and, you know, keeping fitness together is a challenge uh, for me, for sure. I'm, I'm forcing myself to get out and keep my running up and, uh, you know, uh, stretch a little bit. And I've got some fitness bands and stuff like that. It's, uh, you know, those kind of things I find. But uh, man, my sleep schedule is just awful right now. So <laughs> Uh, yeah, anything else you want to add about uh, things you're doing for, for that? Um, I mean, getting outside definitely has been important for me, too. Yeah. I feel like right from the beginning, um, I had to have a schedule, you know, because all, all of a sudden your calendar is free and you're thinking, okay, this, I don't, I don't deal well with an open schedule, you know? So I was like, okay, what am I going to do? So I, I've actually been biking a lot, which I didn't do before. Um, I got a bike and I've been biking about 25, 30 kilometers a day. And I find that it's just the absolute best thing for me. You know, and I try to do it first thing in the morning, it clears my head. Even when I don't want to go out, like it's rainy, it's absolutely the best thing, you know? Yeah, I find for me, it's those days when I don't want to run and it, and it might be rainy and I'm tired and it's like, no, go. Yeah. And that, that thing of how the exercise kind of takes over and you feel better, uh, almost always by the end, you're like, okay, that was a good one. I got that one done and, you know, definitely picks you up. Yeah. And I find while I'm biking or running, you know, you're thinking about, okay, what am I going to get done today? And how do I focus on like, say I have a recording to do and, and it's like getting in the right headspace. I always find when I'm biking, I just, I think clear, you know, as opposed to just sitting in in my space, drinking my coffee, being like, okay, I find if I'm out and I'm moving, I just think better, you know? Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, that's, that's a good one for sure. Um, are there any special projects you have you're working on right now, or uh, are you focusing on your, your songwriting, or is there any sort of in your playing, anything that you're, you're working on right now? Um, I've been doing a lot of recording, actually. Cool. Um, before this, like I did a little bit online, not too much. Um, but it just kind of one thing has led to the next, which is really awesome. I, I think like that just happens in life, you know, you put it out there and then you do one thing and you're thinking, oh my gosh, now what? And then the next day someone's like, Hey, can you record on this? And you're like, okay, 
we've got another thing, you know? So um, yeah, just like learning to use my software better, like learning logic better, um, learning to edit video better, because that seems to be something that's uh, everyone's doing. So I feel like I've been recording more, which is cool, and just uh, collaborating with people all over, like my friends from Nashville, my friends from Canada, uh, overseas, and stuff that I just, I guess I just didn't do that much before online, you know? Oh, that's excellent. Yeah, so it's adjusting to that new reality of being in this little box all the time and yeah. uh yeah and still trying to connect with people and and make art that way so that's yeah, a, yeah great it's it's great that you're keeping the ball rolling right that's that's the whole thing yeah yeah so thanks so much for hanging out with me today um i think i'm gonna hang up now because i've got another zoom coming up in a little while and i uh, got to get some more coffee in me before that one. So uh, it's been great chatting with you, and I hope the bass players have enjoyed the Nashville number system, and they uh, will think about that. And maybe if they have questions, they can get a hold of you. Uh, is it okay to put your uh, your email on there and in, in a title? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Cool. So uh, I'll put it right there, and bass players can follow up with Kirby uh, if they want to get to meet her and, and other artists that want to collaborate. Kirby's always up for that. So... That's really, uh, that's been a great interview. So thanks so much, Kirby, and, uh, and all the best. Yeah, nice to meet you.